Hi everyone, welcome to our live stream. My name is Saba and I am the Science Action Club Marketing Coordinator. Um, Science Action Club is also SAC for short. Um, SAC is an after school and out of school time program for middle school youth to explore and engage with nature through hands-on STEM activities. Um, SAC has three main offerings. So we offer hands-on kits, which I'll be showing you today. Um, curriculum for 12 units, as well as online training for any educators who are um, interested in, in you know, teaching science, but you know, maybe need a little bit more guidance. We offer these in three subjects, Bug Safari, Bird Scouts, and Cloud Quest. So we really believe that all of these can be done anytime, anywhere. Um, at Science Ashley Club, we believe in entrusting students with the tools and the technology that real scientists use to make, to make observations in the real world. So today I'm going to be showing you um, some of the scientific collection tools and observation tools that will come with our bug safari kit. So you'll be able to imagine your students using these uh, materials as well and see if it's a good fit for um, your youth. Um, the activity we're going to be doing today is from our Bug Safari unit, um, and Bug Safari unit specifically focuses on arthropods. Um, here is our guidebook. So the guidebook comes with each of our units, um, and it lists out. Um, you know, it basically, it has it has a great guideline of you know what activities, um, what, what all the activities are, how best to lead them. Um, so you know, if you're a little bit nervous and you're like STEM is not my favorite, it's, it's not my strongest subject. How am I going to facilitate it? Um, our guidebook makes it really easy for you. Um, so the activity we'll be doing today is called Tools of the Trade, and kind of like how it sounds, we'll be showing you what some of the tools of the um, uh, sub-collection and some observation tools are. Um, and this helps us ensure that when you actually go out and start making observations, they feel confident and comfortable using these tools. Um, so Bug Safari specifically focuses on arthropods. So before we begin, what is an arthropod? Great question. Um, and you know, definitely something good to review with your students as well. An arthropod is any organism that has an exoskeleton, um, a segmented body, and jointed arms and legs. So what does that mean? You can think of you know, spiders, butterflies, crabs, lobsters, anything like that. I don't have a lot lobster to observe today, but we're going to be pretending like we're seeing some arthropods. Um, at the end, once we finish it, our, when we <laughs> once we finish our activity, um, I'll also be showing you how to use our iNaturalist app because all of our um, all of our units have a strong community and citizen science com component to them, and so I'll be showing you how your students can turn their observations into research grade um, data points. Alrighty, let's get started. So the first tool that I'm going to be showing you today is going to be our net. And so this net is used especially to catch um, flying arthropods, right? So something that um, is a little bit trickier to find. It's not sitting still waiting for you. So imagine that, you know, this is a little butterfly flying over here. Um, you would swing the net gently through the air until you capture, um, you know, your your arthropod. And you'll notice all of our tools, all of our observation tools and collection tools are very gentle and humane. So they're designed to um, protect the you know arthropod as much as as much as possible. So the net would be used like this. And can you believe it? Our kit actually it comes with a full size functional net um, for your students to actually use. So you fly, um, you know, swing the net, and you can actually lock it as well. So you know, if you have something squirmy in here, it won't get away. So this is our first tool. Um, if you have any questions about any of these tools, about anything that I, I mentioned today, feel free to drop in your questions in the chat, and we'll have some time for Q and A later. All right. The next tool I'll be showing you um, is our beading sheet. So the beading sheet is especially great for using outdoors um, to capture or to observe arthropods that are kind of, you know, out of reach. You may not be able to, you know, normally be able to see them. Um, but the best way to use this beading sheet is to place it on the grass, place it on the floor. And then imagine there's a branch or a bush above you. You would gently tap or, um, you know, shake, shake the bush. So for today's observation, I'm going to pretend like I, my pine cone is my um, tree or my bush. And I'm just going to gently tap, 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 shake, shake, shake. And I'm already starting to see some things um, coming out of here. No, no live organi or organisms today. Um, no arthropods coming out of here. But that is essentially how you would use a feeding sheet. Um, to capture something that, you know, is, um, you know, you can't necessarily climb a tree to make the observation. That's not the safest way to do it either way. Um, and so once you have your, your um, arthropod 
what would you do after that? So the net and the beading sheet are collection tools, but we also have observation tools. So once you've got your arthropod, how do you, how do you make an observation? So I'm gonna be using the kit cam today to show you um, some of our tools closer up and you know, show you how to use them. The first thing that we have is our Petri dish. Um, and along with the Petri dish also comes a loop and a brush. All of these things for your youth to use. Um, I'm gonna head over to the, to the kit cam to show you how, um, our, how to capture a little arthropod. And for today's activity, this penny is my arthropod. So I'm gonna head over here to um, the document camera. So, you know, the PG dish is, um, is relatively straightforward. It's got um, two plastic pieces and a foam piece. So you can use this, um, you can use this uh, brush to gently encourage your little arthropod, your little squirmy arthropod to come in and, you know, be nice to it. Be like, excuse me, I just want to see your shiny, um, pretty feathers real quick. You can seal the arthropod by putting um, this on top. And again, you don't want to be as gentle as possible. So um, you've got your arthropod here. You can definitely, you know, um, snap a photo of it just like that. Or if you want to look at it in more detail, we've got the loop here. And the loop helps you um, zoom in or zoom out. And so if you want to see, maybe you want to get a photo of its legs, or maybe it's just really tiny and you can't see it um, unless you, you zoom in. So you can use a, you can use the loop to look at it in more detail. Now we always encourage our our students to you know get as many data points as possible and to um, take take photographs you know take photo photographs of what they see and to report that later on. So the loop also makes also makes it really easy to you know um, get a good photo so that we can have a good understanding of what is this that we're seeing. Maybe some small details that um, are similar to other arthropods. All right, we've snapped our photo. Um, so similarly to the loop, we also have a magnifying glass, which can help you look at your arthropod in more detail too. Um, this larger lens and the smaller lens have different um, uh, zoom amounts, so you know, depending on how big your arthropod is. And so this also makes it really easy. Now this is an arthropod that would normally be sneaking away and running away, but these tools make it really easy to snap a photo. Of them, and then of course we return them as gently as we can to their to their environments. Alrighty, that is the petri dish loop and magnifying glass. Last but not least is my favorite um, collection tool. This is a pooter. I will say I think I think this is the most popular on our team. Um, the pooter is a gentle and a safe way to collect an arthropod that's maybe a little squirmy. Um, you know, will not stay stay still. Maybe even in a petri dish. The pooter has multiple components, so I'll explain to you what all of these things are. So the pooter has um, a collection area, so this is where your arthropod will be when it gets caught. Um, we've got the blue tube, we've got the green tube over here and a plastic tube over here. Safety first, um, every student will get their own uh, straw to use. So essentially you put the straw into this tube and you'll inhale gently and you'll be positioning this to wherever your arthropod is. Um, and as you inhale, the arthropod will travel along this tube and enter gently into this container. Now, if you're like me, don't worry. There is a small net that prevents the arthropod from going into here, from, from here into, you know, uh, in, into your mouth. So don't worry. Like that's, uh, I'm, I'm happy to clarify for that for you because that's definitely a concern of mine. No one wants to, to see that. Um, I'm going to head back to the document camera to show you um, an example. And I'm going to have my little itty bitty arthropods all around here. I got really lucky today. I got so many different arthropods. I've got a lot of just a lot of um, options today. So here's my pooter. I'm going to be inhaling from this side um, and positioning the other tube over wherever my arthropods are. So let's see how many I can get today. Oh, that one didn't want to come. Alrighty, I've already caught some. And you know, ideally one would be great so you can get a really nice photo, but I got lucky today, I got a few more. So you can see I've got three itty bitty arthropods in here. And just like with our camera and our loop, we can snap a photo of them. And of course, at the end of um, our observation, we want to release our arthropods. So I'm gonna come back up and show you how easy it is to take off um, the lid and to release your arthropod into the back, back into its natural habitat so you're not 
um, you know, disturbing it. All right, so I've got my arthrop I've let my arthropods go now. Alrighty, so these are our different um, observation and collection tools. But now what? We've observed, we've collected, what do we do with all of our amazing data? Now, you know, um, one of the things we believe in Science Action Club is allowing students to step into the role of the scientist. And that also means um, using their observations and sharing their observations with nature lovers and with, with naturalists. And so for that, we have an awesome app that we use for Bug Safari called iNaturalist. And iNaturalist is an online, um, iNaturalist is a community of, nat of nature lovers and scientists who all, um, uh, <clears throat> who partnered to um, create a, a massive data, data set of observations from all around the world. So I'm gonna go back over to the kit camera and I'm gonna show you how easy it is to take a photo of our um, organ organism and to share that on iNaturalist. So um, because I'm in um, a laboratory today, I was lucky enough to find this beautiful tropical butterfly. So I'm gonna pretend like um, I was lucky enough to see this in the field. So. Here, here's my um, beautiful butterfly that I was able to find today. Um, you can download the iNaturalist app on your phone, which can, is also available on the desktop as well. So you open up your iNaturalist app and you'll be able to see all of your previous observations. So I've got a beautiful beetle in here from the past. I've got um, a really nice uh, heron that I found recently. So if you're making a new observation, you go ahead and click on observe. And then, you know, if you're taking the photo now, you can click photo, or if you already have that, you can go into your photo library. So I'm gonna open up my camera and I'm going to snap a nice photo of my butterfly. Now, the best thing about iNaturalist for me is that even if you have no idea what it is that you're using, iNaturalist is made for, made for exactly that. And so um, iNaturalist uses artificial intelligence as well as, you know, uh, another set of checks um, of checks as well to um, help you figure out what is it that you're seeing. So you'll notice, um, you know, it's, it's asking me, what did you see? Now I can say, oh, I think it's uh, this butterfly or that butterfly, and that's totally fine. But if you have no idea, you can let a naturalist do the thinking for you and say, hmm, we're pretty sure that it's in the genus Morpho. And I'm like, you know what? That looks good to me. Um, sometimes it gives you multiple options. You can be like, oh, this is the closest to what I saw today. So you go ahead and tap on that. Now, if you're in the classroom, um, if you're you know, running a science action club and you have students with you, you would want to fill out a few more, a little bit more information, like where the location is, um, was it captured, was it wild, um, what time did you, did you, you can leave in the notes, did you see it flying, did you see it sitting, did you see it eating maybe its lunch, um, you know, where did you see this or organ organism, and that all of this data really helps scientists to figure out migration patterns, um, feeding um, patterns and stuff too. So you wanna share as much information as you can, as you feel comfortable to, and then you just sh hit share. And so something, and so essentially what happens after this point is um, nature lovers and scientists will come onto a naturalist and they will confirm that, no, you know what, that definitely was um, a butterfly from the Morphous um, family, or um, you know what, I don't really think that was a butterfly. Maybe that was actually a moth that you uh, that you confused it for. and um, all of these data points can actually become research grade, meaning they can actually be cited in um, scientific articles. So we've reviewed a few different things today. We've gone over our different collection tools that Science Action Club offers. We've seen our guidebook and we've kind of gone full picture. We've gone from the content to the kits to the citizen science and community science um, connection. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop them into the chat about anything we, we talked about today. We also do have um, a Science Action Club newsletter. So if you want to stay connected with Science Action Club, you want to hear more about our, you know, other resources we have, um, you know, other tools that we're developing. If you want to, you know, stay stay in touch with Science Action Club, we definitely encourage you to sign up for our newsletter. That link will be in the chat in a few minutes. Um, but if you have any questions, this is a great time. We've got a few, we've got some time. One question we have, Sava, is what grades or ages are these resources best for? Sure, yeah. So to repeat the question, um, the question that we, that we have is what age group is Science Action Club best for? And that's a great question. Um, so Science Action Club is developed for youth that are in ages fifth grade 
to, to eighth grade. So, you know, right around middle school. So the age would be <coughs> from like maybe eight or nine to 12, and, uh, to 12. And you can kind of decide, you know, do you feel like um, the tools that we've showed you today, the activities that we're describing, are they are they right for your youth? Um, you know, could you see yourself, could you see your youth engaging in these? But that's essentially the ballpark, um, you know, age range or grade range that we've designed our tools for. Yeah, great question. And what is the best environment for the kids? Would it be a classroom? Would it be out of school time and after school? Yeah, so Science Action Club um, kits are developed to be to be used indoors or outdoors. Um, they can be used in the classroom. They can be used in after school. So we do provide uh, enough curriculum for 12 units. And so that could be done in a classroom. It could also be done in an after school environment. Um, and also in terms of, you know, where Science Action Club can be held, like ge geographically, um, you know, one of our one of the things we love to share is that we've had Science Action Club running in the wintertime in Alaska and in the summertime in New York. And so very, you know, everything from urban to suburban um, environments, Science Action Club can be done anytime. Um, we design um you know, our kits such that, you know, birds, bugs, and clouds are everywhere, right? Um, and so no matter what season it is, no matter which in, which region you're living in, we've seen Science Action Club be um, successful in all the all different environments. Let's see, any more questions today? Hmm. We have a question about how much it costs. How can we get enrolled in the club and use these kits? This is my favorite question. So I'm so glad you asked. Um, so Science Action Club is happy to offer a sliding scale um, when it comes to how much our kids, um, how, how, you know, how much it, run, it costs to run a club. And so the value of our kits and our, um, our online training and our curriculum all together is about 1500. But because we offer a sliding scale, our priority is getting as many um, kits and as many materials and as many, um, you know, uh, products out to as many students as we can. And so with our sliding scale, we'll actually look um, closer to, uh, we'll look at what the operating budget for your program is and also what your need is. And so depending on the operating budget, the kit could cost the full cost of 1500 or it could be um, as little as $150. So we really, really, really encourage you if you know, you've seen something that um, has really sparked your interest, maybe the pooter, maybe the net, um, and you can see your students um, running Science Action Club at your, um, at your organization, reach out to us, you know, check, out, um, check out the link that's right here about our SAC kids, kids, and you'll be able to see a nice um, you know, uh, breakdown of you know, what the operating budget and what the um, cost of the kids would be. So yeah. Yeah. Um, let's see. Any more questions today? We have one more question about iNaturalist. Someone was curious if they can just download it and start using it. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, all of the citizen science um, and community science uh, connections that we have, all of the tools that we use can be used, um, you know, outside of the Science Action Club too. So yeah, iNaturalist is, um, you know, available to everyone. You can, um, oh, there you go. Um, the link is in the chat. So you can download iNaturalist. And if you're out on a hike and you're like, what is that tree? What is that little flower? It's so cute. I just want to, I really want to know what it is because it's such a beautiful flower. Um, iNaturalist works. Actually, I should mention iNaturalist is for more than just, um, you know, uh, uh, arthropods it you can be used for birds it can be used for flowers or trees um so you know basically if you're if you're anywhere and wherever you are and you want to know like what is that or if you're like that's unusual um you know let me just let me just submit this um on iNaturalist and you know maybe uh, somebody else will be interested in um knowing what this is so definitely iNaturalist is available on you know you can download it on your smartphone but you can also use it on the desktop as well so I'm so glad you asked yeah iNaturalist is awesome I use it Whenever I go for a hike, I'm just like, I feel like I have the world in my fingertips and I can just know wherever, um, you know, wherever it is that I'm, I'm seeing. No more questions. Okay, that sounds, um, it sounds like that's all the questions we have today. Thank you everyone for joining. Um, as I mentioned, um, you, the, the links for our newsletter and for, you know, Science Action Clubs um, sliding scale are in the chat. So make sure that you save those links. Um, and if you're interested, we look forward to hearing, hearing from you soon. All right, thank you everyone for joining today. Bye.